So Rand Corporation came out with an interesting study where they compared Putin to Brezhnev, and I want to expand on that. So if you don't know who Rand Corporation is, it's a nonprofit, nonpartisan uh, think tank that uh, does a lot of stuff in the domestic and foreign policy realm. However, it's a fascinating comparison because once you break down the very various facets of each leader, you can see they're very similar. So starting off with the wars they waged, whether it's Brezhnev or Putin, both waged wars against their neighbors. And it essentially turned the USSR or Russia, pick whoever leader you want to, into outcasts. And it ignited anger amongst the Western countries. Now, Brezhnev invaded Czechoslovakia in 1968 because they were liberalizing. Sound familiar? Sounds like Ukraine. Ukraine was liberalizing, leaning more towards the West, the EU, etc. In 1968, that was Czechoslovakia and Brezhnev invaded. In 1979, tens of thousands of Soviet troops invaded Afghanistan. It became a huge boondoggle for them. Kind of like how Ukraine has become a similar situation where they're taking massive losses with seeing very little gains. Nine years later, after that invasion, the Soviets withdrew. Now, Brezhnev was not in power at the time, but it still was a, an abject failure. And it, lar and, it, and it was partially the reason why the Soviet Union collapsed is because they couldn't afford to pay for that war anymore, and it, it stirred angst among the population that there was all these bread lines and the economy was, there was a drag on the economy, but we were fighting this war. Well, we're potentially seeing a similar situation in Russia with the invasion of Ukraine in 2014 and then again in 2022. Now, obviously, those aren't separate incidents. The war has really largely continued, but we just haven't seen a lot of it in the West. But Putin's also invaded Georgia as well. So countries that tend to want to be more liberalized or move towards the European Union are targets for Putin. Brezhnev was the same. Putin expanded what Kennedy termed as the Brezhnev Doctrine, and he and it was John F. Kennedy that said, uh, Brezhnev believes in what is what ours is ours and what is what's yours is negotiable. So Putin has kind of expanded that to what used to be ours should be ours. Vladimir Putin's attack on Ukraine is just like the Soviet uh, situation in Czechoslovakia in 1968. The Soviet troops liberated the Czechs from, uh, from a communist regime that showed dangerous signs of liberal reform, like free speech and allowing contested elections, and installed their own separate communist regime. This is one of the very few cases where communist regimes uh, were replaced, but uh, this one was more aligned to the Kremlin. Now, interestingly, there's a bit of more of a tinge of Hitler in Putin because Putin uses the same playbook that Putin or that Hitler did, claiming that his reason for invading Ukraine is based on the alleged mistreatment of Russian speaking minorities in other countries. And it justifies the war he's bringing to the areas uh, which um, are Russian. Those are technically Russian areas, as according to Putin. So he needs to bring them in because they're being mal uh, mistreated. That's more of a Hitler-esque doctrine, and actually Brezhnev never really used that. But we see that kind of in Putin, but that's a whole other story, the Hitler-Putin uh, similarities. But interestingly, we can see similar responses from the U.S. presidents. Reagan boosted military aid to Afghanistan. They assisted heavily the Czechs, in, or Czechoslovakians, in, in uh, their in subverting Soviet rule there. Um, Reagan gave sophisticated technology for its time to the Afghan uh, military or the Afghan fighters to shoot them down with stingers, things like that. You're seeing a very similar situation play out with President Biden as we're helping Ukraine forge a modern professional army, and Europe's included in that as well. Now, the USSR under Brezhnev and Russia under Putin both secretly have deployed missiles against Europe in violation of the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Agreement. In 2018, the violation came with the development of the Russian 9M729, which is actually still in development. I haven't seen it entirely come to fruition, but Putin has displayed an animated nuclear missile landing in Florida which is just once again he's wanting to bolster and puff his chest up with his nuclear pride that he has now the united states withdrew from the inf treaty in 2018 
uh, and are modernizing their strategic weapons as well as developing non-nuclear intermediate weapons. And they started doing this in 2022. It's a similar situation to what happened in Europe uh, when the U.S. started deploying Pershing missiles and other intermediate range missiles in, in um, response to various violations that came out of Brezhnev's doctrine. Now, both Putin and Brezhnev are obviously very oppressive. And if I were to list the various forms of oppression, could you tell me if it was Brezhnev or Putin? For instance, political repression. Uh, who has been accused of suppressing political dissent numerous, with numerous reports of opposition figures being imprisoned, poisoned, or otherwise harmed? In some cases, laws have been used to target non-governmental organizations and other organizations viewed as a threat to the Kremlin's power. Uh, who's also imprisoned and exiled writers, intellectuals, dissidents, etc., and critiqued when they critique the Kremlin regime. Who does that sound like? Both, really. When you talk about media control, the Kremlin exercises significant control over the media in Russia, particularly television. This control is used to promote the Kremlin's image and suppress critical voices. The state controls, controls all media outlets, restricting the information that citizens can access. Propaganda is used to promote the state's ideology and to maintain control over the population. Who does that sound like? It's actually Brezhnev and Putin. Economic control. Russian leadership has been accused of allowing corrupt, a corrupt system, what's called a kleptocracy, in, or basically a system of thievery by the Russian elite. Um, where the wealth of the nation is controlled in a small group of oligarchs that are closely al allied with the Kremlin. The centrally planned economy leads, leads to inefficiencies and a lack of innovation, which results in a stagnant economy and declining living standards across the board for the people. Again, who is that, Putin or Brezhnev? Well, for all those points, it's both of them. They both did the same thing. Under Brezhnev and Putin, the living standards increased at first, but absent the economic reforms, these, these families face tougher times. And we're seeing this now, especially in the sanction re sanctions regime, um, as well as what was already a downward pressure on the Russian economy because they're just a commodity-driven economy. They don't build anything of significance for the world, only provide oil and, and gas. They're basically um, a version of Saudi Arabia. Now, the Brezhnev era was dogged by food shortages and various lines for consumer goods we're starting to see these lines especially in the banking system not necessarily in food or um but we are seeing them in consumer goods and as we've seen western companies pull out the we see russians losing confidence about their economic future the Kremlin may be unable to sustain, sustain the high war spending as well as the social payments giving the rise of budget deficits and the drop in energy earnings which as of so far this year, have led to a $43 billion budget deficit, which is exceeding the annual Russian budget deficit by $30 billion. So that's just in the first four months. The energy revenues have dropped by 50% in Russia. So Russia's economy today is on a very Soviet-like path where it's rise, it rose up and the aspirations of a dominant leader, whether it was Putin or Brezhnev, is now causing the economy to struggle based on their whims. Under both leaders, the morale of the public seems to be declining. As Brezhnev's economics po promises went unfulfilled, he and his cohort grew more decrepit in their policies and popular support for Soviet rule eroded. We saw uh, Brezhnev's grasp on power lessen. Now, when you look at the massive amounts of corruption in Russia. The, the people of Russia see this. You see videos of Putin's billion dollar palace in Sochi and current and concerns about the war in Ukraine are fueling public anxiety about the, the state of the economy, their jobs, their future, and it's causing the elites dissatisfaction. You have a minority of Russian oligarchs that are starting to dissent from Putin. And you see this in, in various different areas, especially in the business realms. Now, when you take these parallels and you see that Putin's presidency may be at risk of spiraling downward as Brezhnev's did, both seem to be coming more out of touch or they were out, Brezhnev was out of touch. Putin is becoming more out of touch, uh, self-isolating, hypercentralized decision-making, um, making poorly informed choices while punishing dissent. Both had fears of the West, which were generally misguided. 
And while the Soviet Union did not collapse under Brezhnev because he didn't live long enough to see it, Brezhnev certainly put the Soviet Union on that path. The question is, has Putin done the same for Russia?